May you be glorified. I pray, dear God, all of this in the name of your Son, Christ Jesus, and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So, um, the the title of this message, this study, is um, Treasures on Earth and in Heaven. It's uh, in Matthew 6, verses 19 through 34. And I will be speaking of treasures, the things that we find valuable, and who it is that has created them, where Jesus commands that we do not store them, and why, where he commands us to store them, and ultimately what we can do to start storing them in the right place. So, um, Dwayne, yeah, would you like to read Matthew 6? He's still, uh, he's still looking for it. <laughs> would you like to read Matthew 6, 19 through 34? 19 through 34? Yeah. Um, don't store for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroys, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves the treasures in heaven, where the, neither moth nor rust destroys, and whatever doesn't break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. The eyes of is the lamp of, of, of the body. If your eye is healthy. Your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. So if the uh, light within you is darkness, how deep is the uh, darkness? No one can serve two masters, since he, either he will hate one and love the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. That's good, right there. Um, so, who is it that has created everything that we treasure or find valuable? There are many scriptures that, that state this clearly. Genesis 1.1, you guys can turn there if you'd like. It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. If you don't believe this scripture, you don't believe the rest of it. Um, the states who created the planet that we live on, the heavens. Um, in Colossians 1, 15 through 16, it states, He, Jesus, is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by Him all things were created, both in the heavens and on the earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. So, yes, God is a creator of everything. Starting from things that are invisible, that can be things like time, uh, <coughs> demons, uh, angels, um, to the planet that we live on, visible, that, that on which gives no human any excuse for not believing that he exists, Romans 1.18. Um, starting from your brain or to the relationships that you have with loved ones, such as parents, siblings, and or wives. Uh, in John 1, 1 through 3, it states, uh, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning, and through Him all things were made. Without Him, nothing was made that has been made. That is stating, that is speaking of Jesus as well. Another great reference to God using Jesus Christ to make everything or the things we find valuable through Him. Um, yeah, and clothing, food, relationships, animals, work, the work we have, our bodies, so much more. Everything that we find valuable, they're, they're treasures, just everything that God has made. Yeah, God is the creator of everything. And uh, visible and invisible. And because of that, there is somewhere that God does not want you to store these treasures. So where does, where does God command us not to store these treasures? On earth. But, you know, we go back, we, we go and ask ourselves this question. question. Uh, didn't God create the earth in the book? Um, and it, over and over again, he states... Um, while he's creating the earth in Genesis, and he saw that it was good. While he's creating 
earth throughout those six days, he, he's stating over and over again, and he saw that it was good. God said, let there be light, and there was light, and he saw that it was good. Seas and dry land, and he saw that it was good. Land producing vegetation, and he saw that it was good. Two great lights to govern the stars, the sun and the moon, and he saw that it was good. <clears throat> so the, these things are good, but God, for some reason, is telling us not to store it on the earth. He saw that it was good, but he's telling us not to store here. So it was all very good, as the word describes, but it was all made and intended to be used for his glory. But then the first man, Adam, and his wife, Eve, revealed about themselves their sinful nature and passed that down to us, cursing this planet and men and women along with it. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some of it and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened and they realized they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. So that was the first sin right there. They, um, Adam disobeyed God by listening to his wife. She disobeyed her husband by listening to the serpent and God cursed both the serpent, God, no, all three of them. God cursed the serpent, God cursed uh, the, the woman, God cursed the man, and God cursed the earth. And now we're, the, the, the land isn't so, the earth isn't so good anymore. It says in Matthew 26, 24, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. In Psalms 102, 25-26, of, you, of old you laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you will remain. They will all wear out like a garment. You will change them like a robe, and they will pass away. Psalms 102, 25-26. So this place is not one to place your treasures in anymore. When one is storing all their treasures here, they're using the items God created through and for His sons, like it, for His Son, excuse me, Jesus Christ, um, like it states in Colossians 1, 15 through 16, for their own sinful gratification because of a, a lack of trust in God our Savior who promises so much. Um, so some examples are um, Matthew 6, 5, and 7. If you guys want to turn there. Um, it states, And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward in full. Do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. So the ability to communicate with God and pray to Him is a, is a treasure in itself. The ability to that that relationship the is a is a a treasure in itself the ability to it, it's a it's a treasure the ability to sit down and just speak to him is a treasure but people go and instead use it for their own gratification just to get attention and and just to be seen by others <clears throat> they think they will be heard because of their many words. Another one, when you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do, they, for they disfigure their face to, to show other they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they, are, they have received a reward in full. That's the only, that's the only reward they're going to get, the attention. Another one, uh, Matthew six twenty-seven through 28. You have heard that it, it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I tell you, anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. That treasure, our eyes, are your eyes something that you guys find valuable? Yeah, you wouldn't sell them for a million dollars, right? No. But what do men go doing? They go using them to look at women in a way they shouldn't. And God tells us not to look. The moment that you look at a woman lustfully, he has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Instead of 
instead of making a covenant with our eyes like Job did to, to not look at women. Um, so we need to, we need to, so the summary of this section, God does not want us storing our treasures, the things we find valuable, such as time, money, our eyes, uh, on the earth, or another way to say it, with the motive to gratify our own sinful and selfish desires. So where does God want us storing our treasures? In heaven, where moths and rust do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. God desires that we use what he has created for its intended purpose, for his glory. It says in Colossians 1, um, 15 through 16, that all things have, be, all things have been created through him and for him, so for his glory. Mm. So, yeah, God desires that it's used for its intended purpose, for his glory. Although some of these things, these items are made of material that can rot and are items that people can steal, money, for example, or your cars, or, um, you know, tools, or... Uh, just anything like that, your, your body, um, they, when they are being used for the glory of God, the wages that come from them cannot rot, deteriorate, be stolen, and nothing can get in the way of uh, God's promises and, and the wages from that. It, the examples, uh, Matthew 6, 6, back to prayer. But when you pray, Go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. That, that, uh, that reward can't be taken away. The, that, what comes from that is, um, is just pra praise God. <laughs> that, uh, that Psalms, the, an example is David in Psalm 63. Um, fasting. You're, uh, you're growing closer to God daily in doing so. He says in uh, uh, that anything is possible by prayer and fasting. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's, that, that's something. Even casting out demons. And um, says in Philippians 2, 5 through 7, so in your relationships, that's something that we all find valuable. A relationship with God, with our, with our parents, our wives. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in the very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. So instead of trying to get what you want out of the relationship, you um, are putting the needs of others before your own and, and are, yeah, being a servant and uh, using that relationship to, uh, to make sure you're glorifying God by respecting, for example, your wife and making sure that uh, you're loving her like Christ loved the church and God is being glorified. Our bodies, <clears throat> it says in 1 Corinthians 10.31, so whether you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. So even, you know, I've done this in the past by accident. Well, I can't say by accident. I've, I've done it uh, to make myself feel better after I've sinned, or I, I turn to food. I've, after feeling clumsy, and I, I've made the mistake of grumming down food. That's not glorifying God. God would rather have you, God would rather have you, you know, not get drunk when you're, by you not getting drunk, you're glorifying God with your drinking. By you watching what you eat and being careful how you eat, you're glorifying God by your eating. Um, by you fleeing from sexual immorality, you're glorifying your body because your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit. It says, flee from sexual immorality. All other sins a person commits are outside the body. 
But whoever sins sexually sins against their own body. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You are bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. Yeah, that's 1 Corinthians 6, 18 through 20. Like Job, who made the covenant with his eyes. I don't remember exactly what verse that was. And Joseph, who, who fleed. Yeah. Compared to David when he made the mistake of, of um, with Bathsheba, right? He was looking at that woman from the balcony. That was not honoring God and glorifying Him. So when we are storing our treasures in heaven, we are surrendering the things we find the most valuable to God so they can be used for its intended purpose, His glory. When we are not and instead are storing them here on earth, we are keeping for ourselves and using them, keeping them for ourselves and using them for our own gratification. <clears throat> because we're not, we're not trusting Him and are just instead trying to get our own, uh, trying to get the most out of them while we're here. So what, we, what can we do to start storing them in the right place is the, the next point I'm going to make. So can somebody read, uh, what was your name again? Shiloh, do you have the Bible out? Uh, can you read Matthew 6, 24 through 34 for me, please? No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow, or reap, or store away in farms, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? To 34. Why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon, in all his splendor, was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today, and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you with a little faith? So don't worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things. Your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble, trouble of its own. Yeah. Praise God. <clears throat> so, what can we do to start storing them in the right place? We can stop worrying um, because sin is a lack of trust in God ultimately a lack of trust in God first off um, your life it, it, it seems like when it says here that therefore do not worry about your life when when we're a sin is ultimately a lack of trust in God and when you don't trust God with your life, you're not going to trust Him with the treasures that He's blessed us with. You know, we're blessed with common grace. Before we're even blessed with salvation, we're blessed with air to breathe. We're blessed with, with sunlight. We're blessed, blessed with uh, the ability to see. And we just take it for granted. And if you don't trust him with your life, you're not going to trust him with everything he's blessed you with. Money, just so much. And it says in um, Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to him and he will make your path straight. So if you don't trust him with your life, you're not going to trust him with these things. And in order to do so, you need a Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and he will begin to make 
put put those things together. Um, you don't you don't you don't have to worry about uh, those treasures. Where those treasures are going to be put, well, what's going to happen? He's going to take care of the rest. He's he's just going to place it all together. He's going to, and ultimately, in the end, you're you're going to naturally start glorifying God with those treasures that you have. Is is what I see. He's going to make those paths straight, and with the money you have, he's. He's gonna start being glorified with the with the relationships you have. He's gonna start being glorified because he's providing for you with uh, with your eyesight. He's gonna start being glorified with your time. He's gonna start being glorified because you see that he's providing for you provision. He's gonna, you see that he's taking care of everything, and um, yeah, it's it's um. Yeah, you cannot serve God and wealth. You know, it, it speaks about the the context here is luxury, money, but there there are a lot of things that we find valuable, not just money. And you see um in the example of Cain and Abel, and instead of um Cain surrendering to God his first fruits and trusting God with it and giving him his all, but in, instead um he went and just went and kept it for himself and com compared to Abel who surrendered his first fruit and what what happened because of that God got him God put how do I put that Cain Cain was not blessed with salvation Cain was put to the side Cain compared to Abel who is now in the hall of faith and was blessed with salvation and taken care of and was taken care yeah seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and he was blessed with them um, everything that a man naturally starts to worry about but yeah that's what i that's what i see here brothers and that's what i have for today mm -hmm.